Um, so let, let's start with the evaluation. Right? Because before you start, you need a little bit of information. And particularly, we're interested in your ovarian function. We call it the ovarian reserve. Essentially, how many eggs you have in your ovaries. Uh -huh. And <clears throat> as I said before, you know, fertility in women is more limited because you're born with all your eggs. Are these, sorry to interrupt, are these tests that my OBGYN could have done before, like at my regular yearly visits, or not necessarily? Usually the OBGYNs are not, you know, they're getting better at, at being more in tune to that. Uh -huh. uh, but generally the OBGYNs don't do those tests. Uh -huh. Unless you specifically say, well, I'm trying to get pregnant, I'm not getting pregnant, or I'm worried. So those tests basically are, are looking to see uh, what the, your fertility potential is right now. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a blood test, it's an ultrasound, and it basically allows us to assess your fertility, uh, allows me to predict how many eggs we can get when we do this procedure, and also helps me figure out what medications, and I'll show you, I'll tell in a minute, you need to take in order to produce those eggs. Mm -hmm. So that usually is a ultrasound and blood test, Basically, we get the results fairly quickly, and then I will review with you, and I'll tell you what I think, and then we can set up the actual procedure. Okay. Now, when you're ready to do it, <clears throat> we basically, if you think of the big picture, what we're doing is basically in vitro fertilization. And in vitro fertilization is where you basically take drugs, produce multiple eggs, harvest the eggs, fertilize them, grow them, and put them back into the uterus. Except here, we're going to stop right after the eggs are harvested. So we take the eggs and we freeze them right away, which means that when you're ready to use them, you basically complete the IVF process. So you thaw the eggs and you fertilize them and you grow them and then you put them back into the egg. So we're doing basically the first part of the IVF process. And <clears throat> that means that you're gonna need to take some drugs. Um, Unfortunately, they're injectable drugs. I was going to say, do I have to take the drugs as an option? If you don't take the drugs, you only will get one egg. Got it. And we want more than one. <laughs> and yes. And if you want more than one egg, you have to take the drugs. Okay. Uh, we, you know, the drugs we have now are actually a new generation of drugs. Mm -hmm. So they're easier to administer and they're also safer. So in the drug like base... Painful? Well, in the drugs, actually, even though they're injections, they're very easy injections. Okay. Um, I don't know if you, most people are familiar with insulin injections. Mm -hmm. So the needle is really, really tiny and it's actually designed for self-injection. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, it's nice if somebody else can do yeah. it, with, but if you can do it yourself, then it's really not difficult. And how long do I have to be on medications? So this, basically the medication started at the beginning of your cycle and usually about 10 to 12 days. Uh -huh. Every day? Every day. And every few days you would come in and get checked. So we, as, we look at your ovaries, we do some blood work, see how things are going, make adjustments if we need to, mm -hmm. and then it determines when is the right time to take the eggs. Oh. Now, <clears throat> the drugs themselves, the injectable, the drug itself doesn't have much in the way of side effects. However, because they get your ovaries to be sort of on overdrive, you'd feel the effects of higher hormone levels, larger ovaries, a little crampy, a uh, little bloated, a little cranky maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's one of the reasons we bring you in regularly just to see not only how you respond to the drugs, but how you feel, and then we adjust. And do the symptoms stop once I have the egg retrieval? So once okay. the eggs are taken, it, it doesn't stop the same day, but it takes a few days for, for it to dissipate. Okay. So once you have the eggs taken, uh, by the time you get your next period, you should be back to normal. Okay. So, about two weeks after your cycle starts, the eggs are ready to be harvested. And then we do what's called the egg retrieval procedure. Uh, it used to be a surgical procedure mm -hmm. in the hospital with general anesthesia. Mm -hmm. And now it's basically an office procedure. Mm -hmm. uh, it takes about 10 minutes. It's done when the eggs are actually removed through a vaginal ultrasound. Mm -hmm. And we use a little bit of sedation. Okay. So it's very quick and you're out and the drugs that we use for the anesthesia are very short acting drugs. Do we have a recovery um, time after the retrieval? So we keep you here for usually an hour or less, depending on how you feel. And then 
for the rest of the day, it's probably just more about the anesthesia wearing off. By the next day, you should be back to normal. Okay. And then what about my daily activities while I am taking medication and even after the retrieval? So most women actually that do this don't really take time off, except for the egg retrieval day and the day after. Okay. So while you're taking the medication, you can definitely be fully functional. Uh, you still need to come in, but that's a very quick, short visit. Okay. So you come in, you do testing, and we call you later in the day to tell you what to do. Okay. And then, like I said, by the next time you get your next period, it should be back to normal. Okay. Now, as soon as we're done with the procedure, we know how many eggs we have. So as soon as you wake up, I can tell you we have 10 eggs or 15 eggs. And by the way, that's sort of the number that we aim for. Okay. Um, <clears throat> And then, you know, a few days after that, uh, I'll have a meeting with you and I'll review all of that with you and basically tell you, you know, hopefully we have enough eggs, we're good, well done, and you can move on. Sometimes we don't get enough eggs. And then we talk about possibly doing another cycle to make sure that we have enough. And why would my body not give enough eggs? So, right, so that's one of the things that we evaluate ahead of time, and, and usually I can predict that, and I will talk to you about that ahead of time. Okay. Now, the question is how many eggs, right? How many eggs is enough? And with the technology we have today, I think if you have 10 eggs, mm -hmm. I think there's a very high probability that you can have one child, at least, and hopefully two. Okay, so I'm planning like in the future I would want either two to three. So, so we can talk about that, and more. yes, okay. and you may want to do another cycle to okay. more eggs. Okay. But you know, for most people, if they have ten eggs, fifteen eggs, that's enough to they say, okay, now I feel comfortable and I can I can move on. Okay. And does it matter the quality doesn't um, decrease if they're frozen for a year or ten years? They stay the right. same. Okay. Right. So the the way that eggs are frozen, it's it's very different than freezing, you know, chicken in the freezer, <laughs> yeah, because they're frozen in liquid nitrogen, which mm -hmm. means that all the activity of the cells completely stops. Okay. When you put something in the freezer, it actually just slows down the degradation. When you freeze in liquid nitrogen, it completely stops. So then it doesn't matter if it's a day, a month, a year, ten years. It's exactly the same. Okay. Uh, so it's it's a very different concept. Um, so, yeah, so, you know, 10 to 15 eggs is a good number to have. And, again, we talk about that afterwards and to make a decision if you're done or if you prefer to come back and have another round, okay. another cycle. I have a question. How much does my body change? So, say I do start the evaluation, we check and everything looks great, you know, could, could I wait? one to two years like how how would i know should i freeze my eggs now should i wait another year so that's one of the things that i can tell you once we do the evaluation okay uh, again of course it depends on your age right now but it also depends on your hormone levels so if your hormone levels are well within the normal range uh, then you have time okay. uh, and you know it doesn't matter if you do it right away or you wait six months or even a year. But your body doesn't change like drastically it doesn't change now. Drastically. Okay. And you know, it's 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 always the people ask, you know, what what is the optimal age, right, to do it. Mm -hmm. Because on one hand you want to make sure the eggs are still good. Yeah. So you don't want to wait too long. Uh, on the other hand you don't want to do it too early because then you're probably not going to use those eggs. So you usually early to mid thirties is considered to be a, a good optimal age to do the egg free. Okay. But again, everyone is different in how they feel and, you know, some people have medical issues that they are about to go through treatment and they want to make sure that they have eggs that are frozen before they go through treatment. Got it. So basically the entire procedure from the moment, I guess I start my cycle to the day of retrieval is approximately like two weeks. It's two weeks. Okay. It takes a few more days to... I don't have to take time off. I can just come in, do yes. the blood work and ultrasound, you said. And then at the end, I move forward with the procedure. Right. And we're very, you know, respectful of your schedule. Okay. So we will try to work around your schedule, work, etc. Uh, so you don't really need to take time off except for the day of the egg retrieval. And I recommend the next day just to be safe and you know, give yourself time to 
be cool part. Okay, that's perfect. Um, and then my last question was, is there any genetic testing that I have to do um, now or can I do it later once, you know, we do determine that we want to have babies? Like how, how would that work? So genetic, the genetic testing that we do for couples who are planning to have a baby mm -hmm. basically looks at whether they have any kind of, if they carry any abnormal recessive genes. Oh. And a recessive gene means that it doesn't cause a disease unless both partners carry the same gene. So we typically will check the couple and make sure that they don't carry the same gene. Um, we will offer you this test to do now, and you can use that later on when you, you, know, when you have a partner that is ready. Uh, make sure that he's not a carrier of the same. But it's not critical to do it like that. Okay. And then have you seen patients who do have a partner and do know that they want to have children? Do you see patients who do like half and half, like create mm -hmm. embryos with half of my eggs and then freeze the other half just in case? Yes. Okay. So, so typically, m many women that come to freeze their eggs are single. Oh. So that's not an option. Uh, however, there are some women that have a partner, and then there is the option of actually creating embryos. As I said, this is a part of an IVF process. Mm -hmm. So once we have the eggs, it's possible to take some of those eggs and fertilize them and basically create embryos. Uh, it used to be, in the past, it used to be a a good option to do that because the freezing technology for eggs was not that good. Uh, so we either used to recommend that if you don't have a partner, take some sperm donor eggs and, and, and create embryos. Nowadays, you know, the technology is good enough so the eggs are basically the same, whether they're frozen or fresh. So there's not a big advantage in doing that. However, I mean, when you make embryos, you have a lot more information because you can see how the egg becomes fertilized and how it grows and we can even do some genetic testing on the embryos to make sure that they're healthy so if you have you know if you have embryos that are frozen are genetically healthy of course it's more comforting more reassuring in the future yeah okay but you don't have to feel like you need to create embryos because egg freezing is not working so well. got it all right so most people just freeze their eggs freeze and then once eggs. they're ready you can I guess defrost yep. uh, the, the eggs, create embryos, and then move forward. Right. Okay. And, and so, for example, I mean, as far as when we're ready, we usually will actually take all the eggs, thaw all the eggs, and make embryos. Uh -huh. And then we do basically finish, complete the IBM process. Got it. All right.